What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Cold Game Recap. Yes, that is what we are calling it right now because I'm terrible with names and I'm very literal. This this is called game and this is a recap. You get me? Okay, you get me. Leave a like, subscribe. Let's talk about some basketball. Um, There are a lot of games today. And obviously, when there are six games going on at the same time, I have to compromise. So there will be games today that get zero seconds of conversation today because I gave them zero seconds of watch time, okay? I want to start off talking about LeBron James and the L.A. Lakers. Um, yesterday's episode, we were talking about um, Joel Embiid and his loss with against the Portland Trailblazers, how, how good of a player he is and why he's one of my top two MVP candidates. As of right now, 25 games in, though, I think LeBron gets my MVP vote. You know, there's still 50 games left of the season, so anything can change in those 50 games. But I think as of right now, LeBron probably gets my MVP vote. And and here's why. Le- LeBron has always put up the, pretty much the same stat line his entire career, right? You can expect 25-7-7 seven, and seven on average. If he does to give you that, it's a bad game for LeBron James. But correct me if I'm wrong here, and maybe this is because just recency bias because last year feels so long ago. Because Giannis was my MVP last year, then I had LeBron number two. This year, the reason he is number one, because the first 20-so games, I feel like there are so many more moments for LeBron, where there'd be a great defensive play in an overtime game or a great shot in a double overtime game, or like today where his team come out struggling out the gate, uh, going into the third quarter, he comes out and scores like 12 points by himself. Those are like the individual moments. I'm not saying he didn't have that last year, but just 20 or so games into the season, it feels like they are they are more more frequent and this is another year other than I mean because they've been in so many overtime games over the last week or so um his his minutes per game has gone up but before that he was having a historically low minutes per game season he's been able to incorporate that three-point shot and if he could continue to shoot at this this caliber as a three-pointer at about 40 percent I mean him at 36 there's no there's no saying how good he can still be at 39 40 if he can really take he's shooting seven three-point attempts a game this year and he's shooting 40 percent on that seven he's never been able to do something like that in his career so his moments seem bigger at the moment Maybe I'm wrong here. Let me know in the comment section. Um, this is a big game for them, especially when national TV, they come out getting their asses spanked. At one point, I looked over, and it was 22-2. to two. And again, like I said, there's so many games going on at the same time. When I see 2022, they kind of lose my interest a little bit, so I focus in on Utah versus Milwaukee a little bit. And and there, are, there was a moment, because I love watching these games with the homies. Uh, we be in a Discord chat, and my boy, uh, my boy um, Derek was like, Anthony Davis, what are you doing? I look up because his, his TV is a little bit ahead of mine. And I see Anthony Davis has Tyus Jones on his back. But instead of, you know, scoring on Tyus Jones, he kicks it out to Alex Caruso. And then uh, Anthony Davis cranked it up, which is a good thing because for the most part, Anthony Davis has had a very quiet season. Um, offensively, at least he's had his big games here and there. Today was a big game with his 35. He's had his big games here and there. I remember one in Chicago, of course. Um, but for the most part, he's been very, very quiet. Today, he got to the free throw line four times. That is unheard of for a guy like Anthony Davis. But the, the in this game, Game, especially later on, um, I think Richard Jefferson did a great job of pointing it out where like Taylor Jenkins and the, the Memphis Grizzlies went to the zone that for some reason had John Morant in the zone guarding the space of Anthony Davis. And they were just they were taking advantage of that, taking advantage of that. Cal Kuzma 2010 game. Very good game for them. Very good game for them. I'm still I'm still a huge fan of everything Memphis is doing, man. I understand this is another loss for them. But John Morant is still super fun to watch. Um, Grayson now they have so many players on the team that like you would think of players that maybe other teams wouldn't have given a chance, right? Like, similar to, like, the Miami Heat, but maybe not to that caliber, where they have players like um, Grayson Allen, Xavier Tillman, um, John Conchar, Desmond Bain fell in the draft, even though he didn't play today, and I think it was because of injury and not because there's no reason for him not to play. It's Desmond Bain. He's, he's been lighting it up. They have so many players um, of that, like, chip on the shoulder, nobody wanted me players, and I like rooting, rooting for those dudes, you know what I'm saying? Grayson Allen hit six threes today. They just couldn't put it together completely. Um, the Lakers have this switch that they've turned on every single night where they won't play basketball for the first half, and then they're like, y'all ready? All right, let's go hoop. And then they'll, they'll clamp up and start putting putting shots in the basket. So, um, And in the long term, it's probably not the best idea because for LeBron to be putting up 40 minutes a game um, of the past, the past week or so, going to double overtimes against teams that are far inferior to you, maybe not the best strategy, but it, again, it leads to those great LeBron James moments. Maybe that's what LeBron is saying to his teammates. Hey, let's keep this close, bro, so I can hit this shot. I need this MVP award. 
because I think he was really upset about not winning last year. But that, that's what I want to say about that one. We had the Timberwolves going against the Charlotte Hornets. I'll spend a couple seconds here. I love NBA players that are able to change the narrative about them. Similar to what we've had for Andrew Wiggins, right? Andrew Wiggins for his entire career, he was nothing on defense. And this season, he has changed that narrative. He is a plus defender, if you ask me. Another guy that has changed his narrative is Terry Rozier. When Terry Rozier was leaving Boston and he got that contract with the Charlotte Hornets, everybody was like, Charlotte just paid for a shot chucker guy who will never be able to contribute to like winning basketball. About, which is again, I think I think overall NBA media is so bad at um so so bad at those type of things, just writing a player off because of something they did in the past. Um, but Terry Rozier over the last couple games has been ridiculous. 41 points today, one shot of his career high. The other game he had like 34 or so, hitting six threes. Like he continues to just be more than what the label was thrown on him when he got to Charlotte. And it's changing things up a little bit. I remember Charlotte Hornets fans, I follow a few on Twitter, they were more talking about like the future backcourt for this team. Is it Devontae Graham and LaMelo Ball? Is it Terry Rozier and LaMelo Ball? And a lot of them, made, the two that I follow, came to the realization that um, Terry Rozier's probably the eye man out, but he's making it hard, man. This this three-guard lineup has been looking pretty solid in the few games they have played together, and um, and they, they get the win. The thing I have to say, though, about the, about the Minnesota Timberwolves, bro, the Carl Anthony Towns is still getting his way back into the swing of things. Shout out to Malik Beasley um, and, 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 and Ant for having big games. But there shouldn't be a point where the, it's a close game and we get multiple possessions where Carl Anthony Towns doesn't even get a look at the basket. Multiple possessions where, though Malik Beasley had a very good game, where he just came up to court and in four seconds put up a shot. This ball should be going through Carl Anthony Towns on every possession, especially in a close game where, like, in that fourth quarter, before they iced him out, there was nothing they could do about it. There was nothing the Charlotte Hornets could do to guard him. But there was, like, four to five possessions late in this fourth quarter where Carl Anthony Towns didn't get the ball. And I'm like, bro, give, give him the goddamn ball. And then uh, Josh Okogie literally doesn't do anything. I feel like he's just doing cardio every single game. The Spurs. I love watching the Spurs. I told y'all a few weeks ago we are buying all the Keldon Johnson stock, and it continues to rise. Um, this game was way, way... Um, more of a gap than the final score. The final score ended 125 to 114, but I promise you this is a 40-point win. I don't care. The last fourth quarter, the whole fourth quarter was garbage time, if you ask me. The whole fourth quarter was garbage time. Um, and the reason why I do like watching the Spurs team so, so much is because typically teams have, like, lineups that are bad, right? And I don't know if the, the advanced stats will not back me up here whatsoever. But, like, when I uh, – talking about my Chicago Bulls, right – our bench, though we have some good bench players, there are still lineups where, like, it just won't work long term. You know what I'm saying? Like, you put those lineups in for three to four minutes a game just so your stars to get a breather. The Spurs backups and different lineups that they run can be just as good as their starters. That's how good, that's how deep of a team they have. Now, yes, they don't have, like, that superior all-star caliber player. The mark is going to get some consideration this season, but they don't have, like, that takeover player. But, like, they have so many good mid-tier players, and when they're all rolling, it's, it's really, really good. Derek White and DeJounte Murray in the backcourt is clamping up everything, and they're hitting shots. Lonnie Walker off the bench. Uh, Rudy Gay did not have a good game, but we know what Rudy Gay can bring off the bench. They don't need LaMarcus Aldridge anymore, so I'm very curious to how he gets played when he comes back from his injury, um, or if there even is a market for him if some team would be willing to trade for him but he is I don't want to say he's done with but he has not looked good this season I'll just leave it at that he hasn't looked good this season whatsoever and then the Hawks well they lost by 40 if you ask me nasty televised game Luca puts up his career high in a game where it looked like it was Porzingis's game right he comes out he, he hits what five threes in the first quarter they don't know how to defend that and Luca was like I'm sorry to rain on your parade Porzingis um yeah, I'm going to put on my career high very efficiently. And it was it was amazing to watch. Um, he's just one of those dudes that when he has it going on, he, you got it. He's must-see TV. Um, but Porzingis having another good game. And and I, if I'm not mistaken, this team has really got themselves back on track. After a couple weeks ago, we were really talking about how they were struggling. Four straight wins for them. They are at the 10th seed right now, especially with the Kings losing tonight. So a very good win for them. Um, and it's good to see. It's very good to see. Now, the Pels. Zion was 11 for 11, 11 for 12 in the first half, and finished with 15 shot attempts. Inexcusable. I don't know what he said in that locker room for his teammates to ice him out, but they did. There's no excuse for it, especially a guy like him, because everybody watching this game knows what he wants to do. So you can't say, oh, the Mavericks just played really good defense on him. No, they just didn't give him the ball. Give him the ball until it doesn't work anymore. Give him the ball until he misses two shots or three. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't understand how he goes from being <laughs> the most efficient first half in almost NBA history to not even getting shots in the second half. It makes no sense whatsoever. And I feel like Eric, Bl- Eric Bledsoe is a couple games away from tweeting, I don't want to be here anymore, and, <laughs> and him getting shipped out. Um, but give give Zion the ball, bro. He There's no reason for him to only have 15 shot attempts. The Bulls lose to the Clippers, where Kawhi Leonard is virtually unguardable. The Bulls desperately need the team to get healthy, a sentence that I have said every single week of my life over the past three years. Um, but I think Wendell Carter is coming back next game to, to guard Sabonis, so that'll be fun. Patrick Williams is, is a fun player, um, playing against his idol, and Kawhi is literally young. We had no answer for him. If you if he got that ball in the paint or in the in the in the mid range area, give give him two points, bro. Give him two points. Sadiq Bay, oh man, how long are we going? Sadiq Bay um, makes me super happy. Sadiq Bay is one of my um, my guy dear, I mean my guy Mike's favorite player coming out the draft for some reason. Not not that Sadiq Bay's Sadiq, Sadiq Bay's bad or anything, but like he doesn't watch college ball, so it's very weird for him to fall in love with Sadiq Bay without watching college ball. Sadiq Bay was unstoppable. I'm giving the the Celtics a slight pass back to back day, yada yada yada. Um, but the Detroit Pistons continue to be giant slayers coming out and beating good teams. Um, and this this allows the Celtics to fall to 13 and 12, which is uh, not not very good, not <laughs> not very good. But again, slight pass. Next game, I didn't watch too much of this game, but I do remember Hamidou Diallo um, tipping in a half court he for the other team, and they lost by two. So Hamidou Diallo, don't do that next time. Um, Darius Bazy, be a little bit better. I, I love seeing Isaiah Roby play well. And um, um, Carriage Williams has been a very, very surprising player to me this season. He had the, he had the game early this year what, with like 20-something points, which is something I've never seen him do before. And today, 7, 9, and 11. Um, and then Al Horford continues to be really, really good for the team. Uh, I was very surprised that this, t- this game was even close, especially with Shea Gibbs Alexander not playing. Um, but that Hamidou Diallo point at the end of the third quarter just cost him the game. That's all I want to say. The Utah Jazz beat up on the Bucks. Um, this game was not as close as what the final score tells you. And if you need an uh, explanation of why Rudy Gobert needs to be an all-star this season, watch this game again. This man, I am, I am under the belief that you can throw any four players in, in the NBA with Rudy Gobert and you'll have a top 10 defense. That man holds everything down. And the fact that they held Giannis to, what, two points in the first half as a team is ridiculous. Shout out to Royce O'Neal. He did not shoot the ball at all, but his defense was stellar today. Now, Giannis is an MVP caliber player, so he wasn't just going to allow two points to happen. So, in the second half, he really cranked it up. And even through grit defense, he cranked it up. Um, but, but man, the Utah Jazz are 17-1 and one in their last 18 games. Super, super ridiculous play. This is out Mike, without Mike Conley, without Drew Holiday, so both teams are missing their lead ball handler. And, and another game where Donovan Mitchell does not play well by himself, but the team is just so damn good that it doesn't matter. It is Spursian. We talk about Spurs with Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. Where it doesn't matter if one of their top guys has a bad game because they have so many other pieces that can pick it up. The ball movement on this team is ridiculous. If you ain't watching, if you ain't watching the Utah Jazz right now, you are you are missing out on the purest form of basketball. One hundred percent. Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, income into the All Star game, and God damn it, give Mike Conley some votes. He didn't play today, but you he yeah, he didn't play today, but yeah, he deserves it. And, and and the games that I did not talk about are the games I did not get to watch a single minute of. So my apologies to the Knicks fans. I hate to see that Mitchell Robinson broke his hand. That is unfortunate because especially in this game, for me, box score watch, I was a box score bandit on this one. He was playing really, really well, getting the first half uh double double. Um I did not watch the Portland Trailblazers get another win, but I will say I'm still impressed with the fact that the, the Portland Trailblazers, through all their injuries, are still damn good. Um, the Cavaliers, Sexland, is it over? Is it tank season now? I don't really know. Is it time to sell Drummond? I don't really know. And then without without De'Aaron Fox, I had no interest in watching this game where Vucevic put up 42. So maybe I'll watch Vucevic highlights on this one. But again, no De'Aaron Fox, <laughs> no Kenny Beach I'm watching. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like, and I'll see y'all soon. Call game.